Greetings energetic viewers and welcome to Healthy Living. Today on our show we are honored to introduce the esteemed T. Colin Campbell, PhD, a pioneer in nutritional research. A professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States, Dr. Campbell has spent over 40 years researching, teaching, and developing diets to optimize nutrition and health. Dr. Campbell received his master's degree and PhD from Cornell and served as a research associate at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. He has served on several grant review panels of multiple funding agencies, lectured extensively, and has authored more than 300 research papers. His original research, both in the laboratory and with large human populations, has brought him recognition with awards for both research and citizenship. Dr. Campbell is also the project director of the China Oxford Cornell Diet and Health Project, which eventually became known as the China Study, considered the most comprehensive analysis of the role of diet, disease, and health ever conducted. In 2004, Dr. Campbell and his son Tom co-authored the book, The China Study, which summarizes his career's worth of research in nutrition and concludes that a pure vegan diet is optimal for human health. Dr. Campbell continues to actively participate in the development of national and international nutrition policies. Today's show is the third in a three-part series on healthy living featuring Dr. T. Colin Campbell and his research on the benefits of a plant-based diet. Ensuring that people have adequate access to health care is an important foundation for the prosperity and well-being of a country, company, institution, town, or family. In the United States, where people receive health insurance through their employer, this benefit has become extremely expensive for corporations to continue to offer, and many now are no longer providing coverage to their employees. Dr. Campbell believes the widespread adoption of a vegan diet to be the most effective way to lower health care costs. Even though it's been now three and a half years since our book came out, all of a sudden now things might begin to change in this way. The cost of health care in this country right. is serious. Yes. And so what does that do? That that's causing jobs to be loose because you know the companies can't afford the health care. Mm -hmm. It's having an impact on school budgets. Then they gotta cut programs. Right. And so, you know, a lot of people are now begin to know this. I'm having some very interesting discussions with some very significant people in this country right now. Mm -hmm. But all of them only talk about who's going to pay the bill. Is it going to be the insurance company? Is it going to be the individual? Really, none of them are talking about how to make people well. They talk about prevention a little bit. They'll use the word prevention, but that word prevention to me is very superficial. They often you know, say, stop smoking. Well, of course, you stop smoking. Exercise. Put your seat belts on, you know, exercise, eat a good diet. That's what they say, eat a good diet. No one knows what a good diet really is. Dr. Campbell has launched the T. Colin Campbell Foundation to provide information to medical professionals and individuals seeking a better understanding of the role the plant-based diet plays in maintaining the highest level of health. Through Cornell University, the foundation offers accredited online courses that expand on his book, The China Study. The coursework provides a basic understanding of nutrition and explains how certain diseases such as cancer, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and obesity are the direct result of the consumption of animal-based and processed foods. The course also provides practical advice on implementing a healthful plant-based diet. Another exciting feature of the Foundation is its online social network where many people who have successfully overcome deadly diseases through plant-based diets share their inspiring stories and experiences and provide support to an ever-growing community seeking to do the same. There's nothing else in medicine that comes close to this, in my estimations. Uh, I've already had three physicians come up and tell me that you know they're, they're getting their patients to do this. One of them. He just he's bought about 90 books and he gives them out to all his patients and so he asked them to fill out little forms what they think of it. Uh -huh. And the reaction was really impressive. And so I'm really confident that this needs to be the future of medicine. Mm -hmm. It needs to be uh, broadcast and told to the public. Right. And someday it can save health care costs. In a few moments, we will hear more from Dr. Campbell on how a vegan diet can have a beneficial effect on mitigating the global warming crisis that is occurring on our planet. You are watching Healthy Living on Supreme Master Television.
Welcome back to Healthy Living for our program featuring the esteemed Dr. T. Colin Campbell, a professor emeritus of nutritional biochemistry at Cornell University in the United States and the co-author of the acclaimed book, The China Study. In addition to recommending a vegan diet for optimal health, Dr. Campbell recognizes that it is a critical component in reducing global warming. The United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization has stated in a report meat production for human consumption emits more greenhouse gases than all transportation sectors combined. The big environmental problems are related to the way we eat. Uh-huh. It's hugely related to the way we eat. Right. What, what have you learned about how the, the animal-based um, diet affect the environment, for example? In, in this case, I'm going to refer to some work of others. Um, recently, uh, there has been a suggestion made, I think, two or three years ago, by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations okay. uh, that maybe about uh, 20 percent or so of all the greenhouse gases that are produced actually begin with livestock production and that's kind of startled some people 20 percent that's actually it turns out to be much more significant than that now according to recent information I have oh, there's updated and the reason this is really significant is because the greenhouse gases that are produced by livestock primarily are methane mm -hmm. carbon compound Dr. Campbell points out that although most efforts to reduce emissions have been focused on carbon dioxide, reducing methane would be more efficient in cooling the planet. Methane has 72 times higher global warming potential than CO2 over a 20-year time period. Thus, minimizing methane emissions would have a faster effect in curbing the effects of global warming. We are resting all of our arguments about greenhouse gases on CO2 production right. and the control of CO2 production. Governments around the world are saying, right. let's cut back on CO2 production. The problem with that is that even if we were to cut back CO2 production by, let's say, 20%, mm -hmm. which is huge and it's no, probably not possible in the next 10 years, even if we were to do that, right. we're not going to see much effect on the greenhouse gas business wow. because the CO2 that's already up there, it takes about 75 years, according to the numbers I've heard, for half of it to disappear. So it would take a long time. Even if we were able to do the best we could do right now, mm -hmm. we've got a problem. Mm -hmm. That's the argument with CO2. Methane is different. Methane, instead of lasting, you know, taking 75 years for half of it to disappear, it only takes about eight or nine years. Wow. So, number one. Number two, methane has about 23 or 24 times the capacity on a molecular basis of absorbing energy, let's say, for every 25 unit change in CO2, mm -hmm. we only need one unit change in methane to create the same effect. So controlling wow. methane production is far more important. And I just had some information from my friends at the World Bank just recently that the new figures now indicate mm -hmm. that at least half of the greenhouse gases that are up there now, not, not the 15 or 20 percent, mm -hmm. at least half and maybe considerably more, mm -hmm. are due to livestock production. And that is, that, that's ex extraordinary because then if you could cut back on livestock production, you don't get the methane, right. and therefore you begin to clean up the greenhouse gas problem far, far sooner mm -hmm. than you would the CO2. Mm -hmm. right. So it's another whole dimension for the environmental question. Right. There's other questions too. Soil erosion is a big problem with yeah. livestock production. Water contamination, again, is a big problem. Water consumption is a right. big problem. Big problem. Uh, livestock requires so much water to grow. Right, right. So it's many very serious environmental issues right. that can be controlled to a great extent by simply not eating livestock. Dr. Campbell explained his view on why humans began to eat meat in the first place. It seems to me we humans have a sense of superiority. You know, yes. over animals, or superiority over environmental issues, superiority over like nature. Species yes, or somehow we're the lead. We're the lead actors, and uh, you know we can do what we want. And so it comes down to a question concerning morality. You know, and knowing our place in the world. You know, and we ought not to be where we are. 
you know, it's time now to start recognizing that there is more on this planet than human beings. Yes. We cannot um, abuse our power. We cannot we abuse our power. power. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And so I, I think this story is huge. It's really huge and it has so many implications, yeah. you know, to help solve problems. We extend our great appreciation to Dr. T. Colin Campbell for taking his valuable time to speak with us about the plant-based diet and why it is the best choice for humankind to make. We thank you compassionate viewers for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again next Monday on Healthy Living. Next up is Science and Spirituality right after Noteworthy News. May the light of heaven always shine upon you.